Do you need to calculate the internal rate of return, otherwise known as an IRR, using a BA2 plus calculator, but you're not quite sure how to do it? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you in this video just how easy it is to do. But first, I want to say I believe something great is going to happen to you soon. And now, back to the video. In a prior video, I discussed the differences between net present value and internal rate of return. If you missed that video, I've linked it up here, and you can take a look at that to get a better understanding of it. But basically, what we're talking about is the internal rate of return for a project such as this one, and this is the example I've been using for several different videos just to keep it consistent. If you wanted to figure out a project like this, what at what discount rate, the discount rate is like the interest rate that the company picks, at what discount rate would the net present value for this project be zero? At what discount rate would it have a zero net present value? We're gonna calculate that today using the BA2 plus calculator. And it's pretty easy to do, and I'm going to show you how to do it here. But I did want to mention that I am trying to reach the 4,000 watch hour level that is set by YouTube. Anything you could do to help me get there would be greatly appreciated. I do have some long form videos that you could play in the background that would help me get there, and it would help you study and relax because they are very relaxing videos. I've linked one of them up here just for you. Well, let's go ahead and calculate the internal rate of return for this project. In this project, the company is going to invest $30,000. So $30,000 is going to leave the company's bank account and go into this investment. And then over the next five years, the following cash flows are projected. Now, in this one, we set a 10% discount rate. We're not going to calculate that because we want to figure out what the proper discount rate is that would make this net present value equal to zero. So we're going to actually be calculating that. We have projected cash flows. These are expected in the future. Of course, no one can predict the future. So they do the best they can to project them. And we have $11,000 coming back from the investment in year one, 8,000 in year two, 10,500 in year three, 11,500 in year four, and 12,500 in year five. Let me show you how to so enter. The first it. thing we wanna do always is clear the time value of money, clear the workbook, and clear the working memory. The next thing I wanna do is set up for cash flows. So I'm going to hit the CF button, which is right here under the enter button. So I hit the cash flow button and you say CCF sub zero, which would be the initial cash flow. But just to be sure, I'm going to also clear again the workbook just to make sure. So after you hit the CF button, hit second and clear work again, just to make sure all these are clear. And you'll notice when I do hit the second button, you get a, a little indicator up there. So the cash flow, the initial cash flow in this example is $30,000. That is being invested. So that is leaving the company and going into the investment. So I'm going to type in 30,000 and I have to change the sign. You change the sign with this plus slash minus. So I change it to a negative 30,000 and I hit enter, which is right here on the top row that enters that initial investment. I arrow down, which is that key there next to the on off key, arrow down and our cash flow for the first year is the 11,000. Now I'm going to enter this as a positive because it, the convention is it's coming into the company. So it's going to be a positive number. So I enter 11,000 and I hit enter. I arrow down. This is asking us for the frequency this the default in this case is one and we received 11,000 one time so i leave it as one and i arrow down again now it gives us to the cash flow two that's eight thousand dollars type in the eight thousand 
hit enter and arrow down, the frequency would still be one. I could check this one off and arrow down again. Cash flow for the third year is 10,500. I hit enter again, arrow down, frequency is one. Check that one off. Arrow down again, cash flow for year four is 11,500. I hit enter, frequency is one. Check that one off. Arrow down again for cash flow five. Cash flow five is 12,500. And this is the final cash flow. So I hit enter, go down. The frequency for this is one. So I don't need to do anything there. I am trying to figure out the internal rate of return. So I click the IRR button, which is right here under the arrow button. Let's try and get it to focus. Hit that one. It says zero, but that's because it hasn't been computed yet. So that is not your internal rate of return. I hit the CPT button, which is right here above the second. That's for compute. It takes a moment because it has to do a lot of iterations and it comes back as 21.98 and so on and so forth. We're gonna just leave it there. And if we round properly, it's 21.98%. That is our internal rate of return for this project. So that is the interest rate at which, or the discount rate at which, the net present value of this project would be zero. That is all I have for you today in this video. If you got some value out of it, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And also, if you wanna see more videos like this, because there's a lot more to this, Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.